Congratulations to the Trust on its 20th anniversary. Fan participation is a critical component in the running of our club, and the Trust, through its sizable shareholding and directorship, has the ability to play a key role. I want to wish the Trust all the best in its future endeavours and hope that together we can work to ensure a sustainable and successful Lincoln City Football Club. Not long ago, scenes like these seemed impossible at Lincoln City. As the Red Imps Community Trust, formerly the Lincoln City Supporters Trust, celebrates its 20th birthday, it can look back with satisfaction on what it's helped to achieve. Like the team, the Trust has had its highs and lows, but it can now look forward with optimism and new ideas on how, with your help, it can assist City FC in the future. It wasn't always like this. The Trust was born in difficult days. In 2000, City had serious debts. It was feared the club would go under as Chairman John Ream struggled to find new investors. Trying to find a way forward, the chairman said a fans representative could join the board if 500 fans would enlist in a membership scheme for £25 each. Rob Bradley, chairman of the membership scheme, became the first Lincoln fans representative on the club's board of directors. A few months later, John Ream stood down and Rob Bradley became the acting chairman of the club. With the imps struggling on the pitch and uncertainty off it, hard work was needed that winter to create a community ownership package which comprised the trust and local business people. The trust called a fans meeting attended by a representative of the national body supporters direct. Rob, a Lincoln fan since boyhood, continued in the trust and as chairman of the club. The next crisis to hit the new directors wasn't far off. In 2002, ITV Digital collapsed. Lincoln, deprived of vital TV income, went into administration. A Save the Imps march and a vital Sponsor a Seat for a Tenor initiative raised £80,000 in a matter of days. When Lincoln got to the High Court, the judge saw there was life after death and allowed them to continue trading and playing, albeit under an administrator, until agreed debts were paid. Only by these means, with the trust in the thick of it, was the club saved. It was through the hard work by all parties in the boardroom, in committees and at fundraising events and because of loyal supporters that managers like Keith Alexander and later Danny and Nicky Cowley and Michael Appleton had a platform on which to build. In the supporters' trust movement nationally, Lincoln, despite their highs and lows, are one of the success stories. There have been almost 200 trusts in football and rugby, and most have fallen by the wayside. At Lincoln City, the board have bought into the ethos of fan involvement. The trust in turn has raised more than half a million pounds for the club, and nine trust members have for 20 years carried the voice of the fans into the boardroom. In this boardroom picture, we see supporters directors Peter Doyle and Mandy Slater, and it's worth noting that Steve Toynton, now a director in his own right, began his experience on the board as a supporter director. In the Covid lockdown when the club wanted to refund season ticket holders, they gave them the option of donating their ticket money to the trust to enable it to buy more shares in the club. Nearly 600 fans took this route. The trust is a significant shareholder in the club it also has a director on the board of the Lincoln City FC holding company. The partnership is further strengthened by the club's chief executive, Liam Scully, who's an honorary member of the trust. The trust's gold section are a key element. These fans pay for extra privileges and they've raised around £180,000 for the club. In normal times, on three occasions a season before a home game, they get to meet him and him and maybe him. On a fourth occasion every season, 
Each gold member, along with a partner or friend, is a guest of the directors in the boardroom, and then they watch the game from the director's box. These special relationships were recognised in a fan engagement index in which all clubs were judged for dialogue, governance and transparency. Lincoln City came sixth out of the 92 professional clubs. In return for this access and involvement at the highest levels, the board expect the Trust to continue fundraising and supporting community initiatives in a variety of ways. There's a long history of fan engagement at Lincoln. It's believed there was a working men's committee of fans in the very early days of the club. By 1951, the Lincoln and District Football Supporters Club had begun. For decades, they held weekly bingo nights and raised an incredible £1.6 million. Pounds. The Red Imps Association Travel Section, which dates from the late 1960s, is another support group with a long history. This ongoing spirit and commitment infuses the trust today. By joining, your membership fee will provide working funds to invest in organised fundraising and support. For instance, the annual race night, the sponsorship of a player and important community initiatives. The community role is often assisted by the former Players Association, which is part of the trust. For instance, when the Birchwood Colts lost their kit in a fire, it was the Trust who stepped in to buy new kit so they could play on. As the Trust reaches 20, there are once again storm clouds on the horizon. The Covid pandemic is wrecking football finances. The Trust, all the other excellent fans groups and supporters everywhere need to get behind the club we love more than ever.